Mother Teresa of Calcutta, a name synonymous with compassion for the suffering and love for Jesus in his distressing disguise in the poorest of the poor. Welcome to a very special presentation, The Many Reflections of Mother Teresa. Her sisters are a reflection of her charism, her charity, and her legacy. I'm Jan Marie Halfen, your host, and we're here in Linwood, California, at the Missionaries of Charity Convent, where I have the privilege of interviewing Sister Mary Lumen, a Missionary of Charity sister for over 20 years. Thank you, Sister Lumen, for being here today. It's an honor. You're welcome. I'd like to begin by asking you, what does it mean to be a sister in the Congregation of the Missionaries of Charity, founded by Mother Teresa? Well, we are called Missionaries of Charity, so the very name says something about our essence. But I think that Mother would best answer that question by having us look at who she taught us was the first missionary of charity, Our Lady. Our Lady who went in haste to serve her cousin. Mary was sent to her cousin. And being missionaries, we are sent, like Mary, to bring Jesus to the poorest of the poor. This is our special mission. We labor at the salvation and sanctification of the poorest of the poor, with Mary and like Mary. And we bring Jesus to them. We bring God's love. Missionaries sent, carriers of God's love. Why did you choose this particular community, this particular charism? Well, I really did not choose this congregation or this community. The vocation is a unique invitation from God, from our Lord. Uh, for this reason, the Missionaries of Charity, we do not solicit or advertise for vocations. Every vocation is unique, regardless of what congregation it, it is. It comes from God. Why me? I don't know. It's a mystery. I don't know. What I know is that I have been called. I'm convinced of that. Sister, I understand that the good example and love of an elderly sister became an invitation for you to return to your Catholic faith after being away for about one year. How did that small act of kindness start you on the right path back to God? I was working as a registered nurse and had wandered from my Catholic faith, unfortunately. And uh, on this particular occasion, I needed something uh, at the store. I went to the store. And as I was going in, I noticed this sister, elderly. She had to be in her early 80s, coming out of the store with two bags of groceries. So I offered to help her to her car. And she looked at me and said, I don't have a car. And I felt a little embarrassed because I thought I should have known that at her age, maybe she wasn't driving a car. So I went in picked up what I needed to pick up, came out, and something was telling me that I should look for that sister and help her to get home. She was elderly, two bags of groceries, and as I came out, I looked for her and drove up in my car, picked her up. I offered to give her a ride, and she accepted. I drove her home, maybe two, three blocks from the store. And when she entered the car, she looked at me, smiled, asked me my name, and then asked me if I was Catholic. And I kind of suspected she was going to say something about the Catholic faith being a sister. And I looked back at her and I said, uh, yes, sister, uh, I was a Catholic, but not anymore. And she looked at me and smiled again, and she said, come and see me sometime. By then we were already at the house. So she got out of the car and again she said, come and see me. And I said, yes, but I really had no intention of going back to see her. And I never thought about it again. Weeks later, I received a card 
from her. And in the card, she mentioned how much Jesus loved me. He said he loved me so much that he died on the cross for me and for her. It was very touching. I was very moved by that. I put, the, put it away. And again, I thought a little bit about her and remembered that there was something very special about her, even though she was elderly. She was probably retired. She wasn't actively working. Later, when I went through my own um, intense search for the truth, I remembered that card. I picked it up. I read it and I wept because by then I understood it. And she had written that card on Good Friday. And that was the beginning. But it wasn't just the card, I'm sure. It was her prayers. After that, um, I felt very drawn to the Lord because of that experience of his love, his personal love for me. I understood that. I had a, a very deep experience of that. And I was very hungry for it. I wanted a deep personal relationship with God. And I started praying as I really hadn't prayed in my life before, even though I had prayed. It was a deeper level of prayer for me at that time. And I needed to go to Mass every day. I needed that. Uh, I had not gone back to communion because I had to prepare for a confession before I did that. And at the particular parish where I went, there was a very holy priest. And I made my confession after several years and had the joy of receiving communion again. And I was very, very happy. Uh, it was a great moment for me in my life. And I was very satisfied with, with my life. I was very happy with my life. I loved my nursing. And then one day at Mass, um, I understood. I had another ex experience. I understood that God was calling me to be a sister. And I looked up from my pew to the crucifix and I said, Lord, ask me anything, but please don't ask me to become a nun. I got up and as I was walking out, there was a magazine with mother's picture on the cover. It was not a flattering picture. It was a superimposed picture of mother. But the purity, the something special, supernatural look of mother in that picture reminded me of what I saw in the sister I had met at the store. I picked it up, took it home, and I read it. I was highly impressed. And I said, this is beautiful, but it's not for me. It's too beyond me. I could never do this. And there was a picture of the sisters in Calcutta at the mother house, washing their clothing in a bucket. And I was in awe, but I could not imagine myself in their place. <laughs> and then afterwards, I thought to myself, well, you know, you've been away from Mass and the sacraments and from your faith, so maybe you are overreacting. Maybe, you know, this is just your imagination that you think you're supposed to be a nun. And I kind of smiled to myself, but it didn't go away. I knew, I knew, and it only, the call only became stronger. What does it take to be a missionary of Charity Sister? What are the qualifications? The qualifications, I would say that there should be a, an adequate level of maturity. 
there should be a spirit of sacrifice uh, that should go hand in hand with the call. Uh, in other words, that in order to respond to the call of a vocation, you must be willing to give up certain human gifts, like family, for example, or pursuing a profession. Uh, you should have an ability to be able to learn. You might need to learn a language as a missionary of charity. A good judgment, common sense, and good health in mind and body to be able to accept and live what's required of you, the hardships, the demands of the vocation. Please share with us, what is a typical day like in the life of a sister? A typical day, you get up in the morning at 4.40. You are in the chapel for morning prayer by 5. We have our community prayer and meditation, which is an hour. 6 a.m., we finish that. We may have mass immediately or, or mass afterwards. Uh, we attend to our personal duties, our responsibilities in the community. Uh, we have our meals in common. We have silence in our community. We recreate during meals and in the evening for half an hour. By 8 a.m. we go to our apostolates, whatever they may be. We may come back at 12 or 12.30 for our midday prayer and the lunch. Then there is time for community exercises, spiritual reading, uh, and in the afternoon again, we go out for the apostolate again. For a few hours we come back, usually we have holy hour and the divine office. The evening meal, recreation, there is a prayer after the, the evening meal, a brief prayer, then recreation and our night prayer, and we retire. You have a full day. Yes, it's packed. We're here in Linwood, which is near Los Angeles. What is the apostolate here in this community? Our main apostolate is with unwed mothers. There are many women throughout this area, and even in LA, who are pregnant and find themselves without any support. Uh, their family is not able to help them, the fathers of the children or their husbands, if they're married, are not able to help them. And so, as they have a desire to accept and love those babies, we are here for them. And many of them sacrifice quite a bit to accept the life of their children. Uh, and we admire them for that. They do not have easy backgrounds. They come from very wounded and damaged families, deprivation, and need. And somehow, some way, God brings them here and they remain during the pregnancy and for a short time after delivery until someone else is able to help them in a better way with housing or work or whatever. I also understand you do prison ministry on the weekends. On Sundays, we go to one of the juvenile correction centers. Uh, there are many, uh, many young people there, as young as 11 in these places. Uh, often they are charged with significant crimes, and again, the families, 
from which they come from are often chaotic, upside down, very unstable. They are very limited in their human development. And all they know is life on the street. Many of them are associated with gangs. What do you do for them? We listen to them. We pray with them. We teach them about Jesus. When they're Catholic, we try to help them come back to the sacraments. Sister, please share with us about the Missionary of Charity Sisters all over the world. We're here in Linwood, which is near Los Angeles, but what do the sisters do all over the world? The initial work that Mother began consisted of teaching poor children who were not in regular schools, the poorest of the poor. Mother used the dirt ground to start that work and used a stick to trace in the ground. And also the work among the sick and the dying and eventually Mother began the famous Nirmal Hridai, the home for the dying in Calcutta. We have homes for the dying throughout the world, especially in underdeveloped countries. We have orphanages for unwanted and handicapped children. We have shelters for the homeless. We have homes for men, women, or children with AIDS. We have simple schools in underdeveloped countries for primary grades. We have mobile dispensaries we, where we treat people who are sick, uh, lepers, people with TB, infectious diseases, malnutrition. And we have homes for unwed mothers also. It's very varied. I have worked mostly in our homes for the sick and the dying. Uh, as I had a nursing background, that was very useful. And I have worked in Mexico, in Honduras, in Guatemala, in the United States, and in India, in Calcutta. In working with the poor, you realize how great they can be. The simplicity of the poor, the abandonment of the poor, the acceptance of the poor. There can be a temptation to see people not as individuals. And for the poor to come to us and ask for help, or to go anywhere and ask for help, it takes such a great humility. The mother who cannot provide for her children, the father who is out of work, people who are sick, who need, in a terrible ways, the most basic necessities of life. It takes a great humility to come and ask someone for that. And I think oftentimes we can forget that and forget what a beautiful opportunity they provide for us to serve Jesus in them. And it doesn't matter if you are a housewife or a nurse or a doctor or whatever. It is, it's the same everywhere. In every life, there is that opportunity to serve. Sister, did you have the privilege of meeting Mother Teresa? Yes, I first met Mother in 1980 when I had joined the Missionaries of Charity in the Bronx. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. We, the other girls in my group that had joined, we were very excited and we were expecting to see a saint. 
and we were not disappointed. How did Mother Teresa impact your life? The thing that I found very striking in Mother was her absence of self. She was always other-oriented. It was never about her. She was always looking for the poor, the needy, always. If she was in a room with people, she would automatically go to who was the poorest, who was the neediest, who was the loneliest, who was not being paid attention to. It was always. She was an expert at seeing needs, and she did not hesitate. She was looking, always looking for Jesus in the other, but especially in the poorest of the poor. Sister Lemon, what has enabled you to persevere in the congregation of the Missionaries of Charity for over 20 years? Only grace. Only grace. And for grace, we need to pray, and we need to be faithful. Fidelity to our way of life, fidelity to our vows, prayer, and much grace. Is there anything you'd like to say to a young woman who may be watching and discerning becoming a religious sister? I would encourage her to pray and to come and see the missionaries of charity. Thank you, sister. It's been very informative. I'd like to conclude now with a closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, you told us to ask you to send laborers into the vineyard. Therefore, we ask with confidence that you touch the hearts of many men and women to follow you in religious and consecrated life vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially in the congregation of the missionaries of charity. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, through our Mother Mary, with the intercession of Blessed Teresa of Calcutta. Amen. And now, Sister Lemon, you have a beautiful prayer that you'd like to share. I understand the missionaries of charity recite this prayer all over the world. Yes. This is the Radiating Christ, a prayer written by Cardinal Newman. And it is particularly beautiful for missionaries of charity who are called to radiate Christ everywhere, all the time. Please share that with us. Dear Jesus, help us to spread your fragrance everywhere we go. Flood our soul with your spirit and life. Penetrate and possess us so utterly that our lives may only be a radiance of yours. Shine through us and be so in us that every soul we come in contact with may feel your presence in our soul. Let them look up and see no longer us, but only Jesus. Stay with us and then we will begin to shine as you shine so to shine as to be a light to others. The light, O oh Jesus, will be all from you. None of it will be ours. It will be you shining on others through us. Let us thus praise you in the way you love best, by shining on those around us. Let us preach you without preaching, not by words, but by example by the catching force, the sympathetic influence of what we do, the evident fullness of the love our hearts bear to you. Amen. It's a tremendous work for God that you're doing, seeing Jesus in his distressing disguise and the poorest of the poor, like Mother Teresa did. Mm -hmm.